Hi. Welcome everybody. Today I'm not going to make a long lesson. I'm actually going to just show a couple of drills that Timo Ball made videos on on his own channel. So I will link those in the description and in the video. The first one that Timo Ball shows is one backhand, one, uh, one forehand, one backhand, and you play all of them forehand. So for now I'm just going to show you slower. So even if you do this slow, you can really get your legs going. So even though it's slow, you can see you can do the whole movement in one jump, you can do the double jump. Um, the double jump, the idea is that first you get into the middle, because you don't know yet if it's going to go left or right. And then you do the second part. You can do this at this lower speed, so you can really get used to doing it. Let me show you now how the drill is done at a lower level. That's forehand, middle, backhand, middle, forehand. That's how you can start with this one. As you can see, that's not too easy either. Uh, you can put it a little bit slower. And the idea being that you get a little bit more time because you pass through the middle, both coming from forehand and coming from the backhand. The next level is you do the same as we just did, but everything forehand. All right. And then the last version of the exercise before the final exercise is you cut out the middle when going back to the forehand. Why? Oh. <laughs> because it's easier to move forward than backwards. So that's why it's not as heavy yet as forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand, because going from here and then getting back here for a forehand drive is much harder. Probably one of the reasons that Timo Bold switches hands now, because he's become a bit slower in getting back to his backhand switch his hand, he has a much, much more range. Um, but yeah, he's super fast in, uh, in the forward direction. So it's quite heavy. Uh, honestly, unless you're professional, you can probably stop here. Now, doing the original one at a slower pace is uh, its not a bad idea. If you want to <laughs> train the more physical parts of table tennis, you can see I'm totally out of breath. I'm not in my best shape these days. I have, actually have an ear infection. But uh, we keep going, right? I'm gonna try the original one again, but at normal time scale, I think it's a little bit faster than how Timo would do it. I'm not sure I will get there, but uh, we'll see. Well, it's not also not about being the fastest, but um, since I'm just doing it for a couple of strokes, I'm gonna try to do full full speed. I have to imagine Timo Ball will just probably do this for a couple of minutes. Um, I might do that when I start training again, but I'm not, not doing that today. So, all right, let's see. Whew. 
these are long distances so um, if you want to play like Gerard for example I'm quite sure he could reach that no issue his leg work is really good so you want to become like him his exercise is not too bad of course today we're not talking about backhands everything is forehand if you're backhand oriented this might not be for you apart from of course moving your legs also you might think that you're backhand oriented maybe you're just not moving fast enough or well enough so training your legs can open more of your game for sure let's look at uh, other exercises it's something that he posted maybe even last week so he said well he didn't show it but he said that normally you do like uh, 15 minutes two-thirds forehand uh, 15 minutes two-thirds backhand chinese drills is how he explained that you don't have to stop for balls anything like that so you can probably do well a 15 minute session would probably be seven or eight minutes in here and the eight minutes might, might be like four or five minutes if you don't stop nobody's stopping you from pushing you even more and of course if there's uh, somebody feeding the balls except for maybe some pauses they can just keep going as well right so you don't have to keep going if you do this for 15 minutes do a good rep if you feel like you're starting to slow down stop for a, for a minute take a breath and continue all right let's take a look at two-thirds forehand super dead <laughs> already so it's costing me a lot as you can see moving back even in this exercise is much harder than moving to the deep corner even though you might get late and not touch it but here it's very easy to just hang back Whew. ideally as uh, Ri Sung Min explains you can also instead of moving both your feet to create the space you can lean a bit but then you need to great space with your other leg so you still have time or still have your weight well distributed to return I'm not that good at it yet I put a link in here so you can see how that works let's take a look at the back end So one last thing, for people that don't have that much space, they can't pivot, this can still be very interesting Ooh, because you can train your crossover point. So when the ball is coming from there, the angle is here, here, so you're a little bit more in the backhand side, which means that the middle is probably a forehand. And you can use this exercise to train to be ready for that. Oh man, I hope you like that. No, I'm, just, I'm, go I'm just going to die. I uh, hope everything recorded well. So, um, these exercises are really good for real life players as well, even if the physics don't totally match your real life bat and stuff. These strokes, even if you miss, you can do them very similar to real life. And then of course your legs, can be one-on-one -on -one. they can be exactly the same so in case of movement and training your footwork in here it's practically perfect all right so good luck with that see you in the next one